Okay, welcome to uh, module two. In module two, we are going to talk about different image enhancement techniques. In this week, we are going to talk about image enhancement, image contrast enhancements. So the uh, module will consist of three weeks. We are going to talk about image contrast enhancements, spatial filtering uh, in a week number one and spatial filtering in week number two, or two parts for spatial uh, filtering. Now, uh, first of all, the uh, basics of intensity transformation. So the spatial domain processes are based upon the expression G of XY is equal to the transformation of F of XY, where F of XY is an, our input image, G of XY is an, our output image, T is the operator that operates on F. Okay, so T is what is going to happen with the pixels F in order to produce pixel G. So for instance, if you look at this image, you can see that this is our image that has the, the values of F of X0 X, and Y0, and these are our eight neighbors. So this is a three by three neighborhood of point X0, Y0, point X0, Y0. So today we are going to talk about all of these operations. So the uh, smallest possible neighborhood size is one by one. Usually we take a three by three, and uh, usually the neighbors are uh, of, of uh, odd numbers, so we need to be careful. We take one, three, five, and so on. In this case, G depends only on the value of F. Okay, uh, this becomes an intensity of the, also called the gray level mapping of the transformation function. So if we consider S, which is our output, R is our input intensity, T is our transformation, we can produce a transformation function either to be like this, with having two values, and this is called thresholding, because if your value of K of the intensity is less than K, then you have zero. If it's bigger than K, then you are going to have one. So it has only two values, zero and one. Over here, you can see that we have a transition between the low and high values, and you can see that this is dark and this is light, this is dark and this is light. Now the shape of this curve will identify which function we are going to use. So this, this shape or this figure um, summarizes the whole thing. So if you want the negative of an image, S will equal to L minus one, minus r. L minus one is the levels of the intensity. So let's say I have a three bit image. So L will be eight minus one, which is seven minus r. So this will be seven minus r. So if r is very light, okay? Light means on the top of the intensity levels. So this is my intensity levels. This is starting from zero up to seven. And as I go up, it becomes white and down is black so if my r is at top of white which is seven so seven minus seven will equal to sorry seven minus seven seven minus seven will equal to zero so the lighter or the white will become black and the black will become white this is our negative curve this is our negative curve Okay, now the other the other curves over here, the other curves over here, this one is our identity curve, meaning that this curve will do nothing. This is our log curve. This is our power curve. So each one of them will has its own function. We will see that later on. So a negative of, of an image, consider this image of Einstein. The negative of this image is this image just by applying this function, which you are going to try and see how it's done in the lab uh, experiments. So the log transformation, the log transformation we have S is equal to C log one plus R, log one plus R. So where C is a constant and it is assumed that R is greater than zero. It is assumed 
that r is greater than zero because we do not have a log for a negative number so we assume that r is greater uh, than uh, zero now the shape shows in the figure the transformation let's let's take this uh, log function over here let's take this line this one the log function okay now this log function if you pay attention over here let's take this l over 4 the l over 4 if we see it will be mapped to 3 l over 4 to 3 l over 4 that means the picture becomes lighter the picture will becomes lighter because smaller values are mapped to large values and a large value 3 l over 4 will also be mapped to a larger value so this is the log image and it will make your images become lighter we have also the power law or the gamma transformation the gamma transformation it is s is equal to c r gamma where c and gamma are positive constants here you can choose what line you want you want the identity you want a log or you want a power in the power uh, uh, in the power function if I can show you over here if we choose this sorry if we choose this line over here in the power function so you see that L over 4 is mapped to a value which is less than L over 4 L over 3 is mapped to a value which is L over 4 so this will give us a darker image. If your image is too light and you want to make it darker, you go for power transformation. So the power law, we can use this equation. If you make C a constant, you just play around with the value of gamma and you can see that you can go throughout the spectrum. Again, this will be shown to you all inside the uh, lab experiments. So this is the gamma correction. You can see that here the dark is a lot here it's spread much more better here is also the image after it is done you can see that here the dark is taking much more and here it's spread much more better so the gamma corrected the image as viewed on the same uh, monitor here is the original image and here is the gamma image an example over here is the spine you can see that this part is quite dark and we cannot find the details if we apply c is equal to 1 and gamma point, uh, 0.6 point 0.4 and point 0.3 we are going to find some good results and start seeing better details this is another image this is our original image and here we apply different values of gamma to in order to uh, um, fix the image and you can see that this image with gamma is equal to um, uh, 5.0 we get much more better results so the next is the contrast stretching contrast stretching so what is the contrast of the image we talked about the contrast of the image last time it is the difference between the maximum value and the minimum value okay the difference between the maximum value of intensity to the minimum value of intensity and we talked also about the dynamic range where it is the ratio from the maximum value to the minimum value so contrast stretching we want to stretch the contrast of an image in order to contrast to stretch the contrast of, in, of an image we need to understand what hap what's happening with the image you can see this image over here where the contrast is located in one place we stretch it to get better results so low contrast images can result from poor illumination lack of dynamic range in the range of the sensor color or even wrong settings in the lens so the contrast stretching expands the range of intensity levels and, and in an image so that it expands the full intensity range of the recorded images so you can see here this is the input intensities and here is our contrast stretching so we get different types of contrast so in order to understand how contrast operates we need to find the histogram we need to understand what's a histogram of an image 
The histogram of an image will be discussed in the second part of this uh, video, which I will hope we are going to see soon. Thank you for watching.